Wilhelm Stenhammar is a Swedish composer from my home country and we celebrate his 150 year anniversary in 2021. And I feel he's like a Swedish Brahms. It's romantic music, it's very personal, it's in the tradition of building pieces on motivic unity and he's careful with his counterpoint at all times. But he can also capture this special Nordic character that's heavy on the melancholic side, it's Nordic noir. But there's also a sense of pride and a connection that runs deep to something that has been around for a very long time. And there's no better piece to show what I mean than this one. From the suite, Sina Sommanetter, Nights of Late Summer. It consists of five pieces and this is the first. Tranquillo e suave, tranquil and soft and smooth. Let's hear the beginning of it. So I will just mention a few things and then play through the whole piece in a performance. But let's look at the beginning. We have these upward going suspensions. It's kind of leaning forward because it's all the time in suspension and it only resolves on very weak beats on the eighth notes. Suspension on the four resolving to three and then immediately seven to six and then on this chord that's half diminished chord very unstable and now we get this kind of a resolving uh, motif kind of insisting and again suspension now we're resolving to b flat major so i'm kind of dominant to e flat major that's a relative major to C minor, so it's in C minor, but E flat major, they're very closely linked here. And then we get this kind of scale motif upwards. But it's in canon and in sequence. So we have it in, well, first it's two voices, uh, a tenth apart. It's just lovely in this register to play this. And then we have a another pair of voices answering so and you feel like your hands are not enough when you play this because there's so many voices but the, so you like you need to switch fingers on the keys a lot but uh, it's possible and uh, really thick feeling when you play this this lovely resolution again uh, after we've reached the high end. This motif, it's very close to the first one in bar two. It's just on 16th notes. And I mean a little bit different uh, emphasis on the rhythm but it's uh, closely tied together. So the form is ABA, we get this material for one page, we start a new phrase that rises higher and then falls back down again. And then in the middle section we get some new material. It's a kind of a theme that starts high and just falls down. That's the Nordic melancholy. So hopeless. And it's some kind of choral in the background here, but uh, more melodic on the top end. Again, Stenhamar had really big hands, so he wrote for uh, his own hands, but it's really hard to play like this. He could reach this. Like, yeah, I can cheat, but it's uh, so 
it's hard to like uh, some pianists play it like yeah uh, after the beat but I, I like to do it as the rest of the arpeggios do them before but it's really hard to catch in the pedal yeah and so on so this phrase comes four times in different configurations the second time is he's inverting the voices so it's what was at the top is now at the bottom and the other voice is uh, on top yeah. and then it kind of grows more and in the end of the B section, we get some amazing mediant shifts. So we land on F minor here. And now. So D flat major, F minor. If you go a third up or down from F, so in this case down to D flat major, that's a mediant relationship. And they always have this nice, little bit surprising effect and it's fresh and new and because the chords share one or two notes if it's a mediant and here they share two notes, F minor and D flat major. And so you can change the character with just one note in the chord. And here we get a whole chain of mediants. Stenhamar goes from F and then he's gonna go down a third like this. D flat major now, bass, B flat minor, G flat major, E flat minor. So it's going F but with the chords. And then it's a, the most painful on top here. But this amazing low register again, just a major, D flat major. It's like, it's painful, but it's gonna be all right. And... Okay, I shouldn't uh, tell everything about the piece, I'm gonna play it for you. Then we get the return of the A section. So remember the suspensions. Now they're more filled out in the left hand, like something is stirring deep down. Because we get uh, kind of, yeah, it's this motif that we've had. So now it's uh, imitating. And now it's continuing, and we get the entry of the first theme. continues the left hand with the eighth note so instead of which is the first time now it's, it's like it's more insisting so now in the recapitulation if you can call it that it reaches for something more uh, than in the beginning and it's more crescendo and eventually it just breaks through the surface and Stenhamar does that by swinging widely between tonalities so we get a sequence here. And now we kind of expect a cadence on A minor. I mean, th that's the tonality. But it's just take a abruptly throws in a C sharp minor. So from A minor. this really dense chromaticism it sounds like Wagner and it's it's not normally like that but in the climax it's so much emotion like well up inside that needs to come out and this is the way to do it jumping between widely different tonalities
but then, well, it uh, takes a new turn. But eventually it dies down to round off the piece in a more worthy manner and not an emotional outburst. And we get the echo from the middle section, even more dolcissimo, espressivo, sweeter, higher up. And then we get some more median shifts, but in the end, it just goes down and dies away. And in the end, all that's left is a low C. It's the same way that is as it begins with the C down there. So before I play this, a special shout out to my Patreon sponsors, E Silver Race and B Nagoyan. And now I give you Stenhammer's Late Summer Nights number one. 